following program is recorded content created by the Truth Network. It's Matt Slick Live. Matt is the founder and president of the Christian Apologetics Research Ministry, found online at karm.org. When you have questions about Bible doctrines, turn to Matt Slick Live for answers, taking your calls, and responding to your questions at 877-207-2276. Here's Matt Slick. All right, everyone, welcome to the show. It's me, Matt Slick, and you're listening to Matt Slick Live. If you want to give me a call, all you have to do is dial 877-207-2276. And also, you can uh, send me an email. That's easy to do. Just send it to info at karm.org, info at karm, C-A-R-M dot O-R-G. And... Uh, Put in the subject line, radio comment, radio question, and we can get to it. All right, no big deal. We have nobody waiting on the phones right now. So uh, last night, um, for the second night in a row, I was invited in to discuss Reformed Theology in a, a, a chat room. And um, uh, so, you know, but anybody was there listening. You want to call in, you can comment about it. Not a big deal because we have slow calls on Fridays anyway. But here's the thing is uh, I've rarely ever been treated that badly um, by anybody, including atheists, uh, you know, Mormons, Jehovah's Witnesses, Catholics, uh, Muslims. Uh, I have, I, I can't even think of, well, I have been treated worse than these guys. That was by the Universalists. They, they, uh, they had stuff that was so bad. It was just, it was incredible, the stuff they called me. These guys weren't that bad. But uh, they were bad. They were horrible. Uh, condescending, insulting. When they'd ask a question, there was an insult in it. Uh, you know, why did the Calvinists always deceive people when they say such such? You know, it's just stuff like this. And I said, what? What are you talking about? And uh, they said, uh, they said that the God of Calvinism is evil, and like, what? Where are you, where are you getting all this stuff? And then one, th- uh, one thing, for example, they said, does the God decree everything? And I said, can you define what you mean by decree? And they couldn't define it. They, you know, they just don't understand what God makes it happen. And I said, well, there's a sense in which he directly causes or indirectly permits it. So both of those are within the, the decree of God in that he uh, will permit people to do things against him, but it can't occur unless he permits it to occur within his sovereign plan. And I said, so the decree is by direct and indirect means. And they said, oh, so you think God decrees evil, doesn't he? You're saying that? I already get that, man. It says he, he decrees his evil. And it's like, are you guys not listening? And this is how it went. Rabid. And then at, we did an after show afterwards. And uh, people came in and they said, I guess you didn't know, man, how bad these guys were. I didn't know. I didn't know. If I didn't know it, I wouldn't have you know, bothered. But, they, but some things did happen out of it. There were people in that room chat room who who were saying you guys are treating you know matt and and also a guy named scott he may call i don't know uh, he was in there he did pretty well uh, he's reformed also he did really well and uh even people uh, even an atheist was listening said he couldn't believe how badly they acted <laughs> it was pretty bad so uh, they actually banned me so that i couldn't come back in and talk when i, when I said to one of them hey, your total depravity sh- showing <laughs> and boom they that's it. We're not talking to you anymore. It's such whining babies. So my my daughters have a name for people like that. They call them man babies. <laughs> so I love that term. I, I call them diaper Indians. You know, wah, wah. and uh, but they're man babies because they're diaper Indians. And uh, so <laughs> that's what was going on. Uh, but man, and oh, also this one guy he says. He said, Jesus, boy, the said of everybody who ever lived. And I said, really? <laughs> He's sure. What's the first Samuel 3.14 read, you know, say, and, and I quoted it to him, uh, where God says, um, this, I get a kick out of this. God says, I've sworn to the house of Eli that the iniquities of Eli's house shall not be atoned for by sacrifice or offering forever. I said, so did Jesus, <laughs> I said, so did Jesus, did Jesus bear their sin? <laughs> He said, "You said, of course he did." I said, "Really?" He says, "You got the context wrong." I said, "Okay, what's the context?" And he goes, "Well, let's read it." <laughs> so I said, "You don't know the context, otherwise you wouldn't say." Let's go read it. And he goes, 
<laughs> he got mad at me. And uh, so we read the whole context, and it didn't change anything. So he finally admitted what these guys admitted to. He says, yeah, okay, didn't buy, do that. But that's an exception. <laughs> he said, so, so I proved my point? Is you admit it's an exception. It means you admit he didn't bear the sin of everybody ever lived, right? And uh, what do you make a big deal? You're saying that's like everybody <laughs> said, that's not what I said. Oh, man, these guys were just man babies. Oh, you know, I get a kick out of this stuff. You know, <laughs> I got issues, but I, I love hate mail. I love wacko mail. I love it when people are just obstreperous to a point, you know, and, uh, and then they get, they get, uh, they get uppity, uppity. <laughs> That's what it is. And he didn't like being cornered. And then at one point I said, okay, so Colossians 2.14, you know, and Jesus canceled the sin debt at the cross. And he, they go, yeah, that's right. That's what it says. It canceled the sin debt. <laughs> this, is, this is what the one guy actually said. He said, I said, well, wait a minute. Now, so he canceled everybody's sin debt, right? Yes, all of it, right? Everybody? Yes, that's right, everybody. He said, e except for the house of Eli. He, goes, he, said, he got mad at me for bringing that up. And I said, so he, everybody, okay, forget the house of Eli. So everybody's sin is canceled, right? He said, then why does anybody go to hell? Long pause, because I said, their sin doesn't, it's not existing anymore. It's all, it's all gone, right? And we've got to receive it. Oh, so then you're saying that the power of the cross depends on what you do? How would you receive it? Oh, they didn't like that either. And um, so I said, so uh, the cancer, what, what happens? Oh, the sin that's canceled at the cross, did it cancel for everybody? They said, yeah. They said, then how can, many, can anybody go to hell? And he said, because they sin some more. <laughs> Just like, crickets. <laughs> it's like, he, 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 crickets out there. Even the crickets are looking at each other like, what? What, what do you say? What was that? I mean, these answers were, oh, man, they were bad. And uh, so that thing, I think it's why they kicked me out, because they didn't like getting pinned left and right while they're calling me a heretic. <laughs> but, but wait a minute, how can I be a heretic if you're the one saying stupid things? I didn't say that, but it was, it was, uh, they were, it's called stupidification from the, from the man babies. Oh, man. See, I have fun with stuff like this. Okay, wait a second. You use that word man rather liberally, Matt. <laughs> That's what Humboldt Clay says in the chat room. Now, speaking of which, if you want to join us in the in the chat room, it's easy. You just go to Rumble. Rumble.com forward slash Matt Slick Live. And uh, all one word. And you'll you'll find you can get in there and get in chat. And the, the people, we've been in there. Oh, they've been in there for a long time. And uh, they get a little bit uh, confident in their slight insults <laughs> that they, they deliver towards me. Sometimes, you know, they'll say the big jokes and stuff. It's all good. We have a lot of fun in there. Uh, the light at the end of the tunnel was an oncoming slick train. <laughs> yeah, I like that one, too. That's pretty good. Humble Clay's got some good stuff. He does pretty well in the chat room. Let's see, Randall said, before I left, I told them they weren't acting like Christians. They were mean and that they needed to apologize to you guys and repent to God. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That is true. Oh, yeah, last night was pathetic. That's what one guy says. Call in. We can talk about it. We've got nothing else to talk about. It's a nice Friday. Fridays are loose. So uh, there you go. Being banned by morons is a compliment. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. So uh, I didn't leave. See it live, showed up late and thumbed through it. They acted like liberal lefties. Uh, yeah. So you take it well, Matt. That's what Laura says. Well, I, you know, I, it's just, it, it's interesting to me how people can act so badly. The man babies, the Diperinians. You can't talk to me like that because it's truth and I don't have an answer, so I'm going to get rid of you. See, that's how they handle it. All right. I guess I'm making myself. <laughs> Have a good time. I don't know about anybody out there, but I'm cracking up, having a good time. All right. I think we have no callers. If you want to give me a call, the number is 877-207-2276. So let's try this. Let's get to um, some of the emails, email questions. And uh, I like this name. I tease this guy. His name's Bill Cannot. And I said, what can I, you do? And, uh, you know, anyway, I'm sure he's never heard that. 
So, Matt, uh, what are your thoughts on this? Something I just recently thought about when we die, NDEs, even our physical brain and our spirit are disconnected, and yet there is some sort of consciousness. Just been over that little bit already. My thought, could the brain merely be a sort of conduit between the physical brain and the spirit? Uh, the physical brain being a conduit to the spirit, that's what it means. And the spirit evidence that we have, and the scientific evidence that we have of different parts of the brain working, lighting up, are merely the physical communication with the spirit. Yes. Now, this is that's a good point, good question. There's actually a lot of dis- it has been a lot of discussion, even among secularists. How is it that the brain can affect the mind, and what is that mind? And and uh, a, uh, an injury can affect your um, your your understanding of stuff. And I've mentioned this before. I had a, a friend back in San Diego, and um, uh, he had a brain injury that they had to do surgery on his brain or something and afterwards his friends told me this that he became a jew he was a christian and then lost his faith in christianity and became a jew and they said it happened immediately after the brain uh, surgery you know i'm not saying one connected to the other but it was interesting so um what is the relationship between the uh the mind and the spirit uh can they affect each other these are just discussions that people have had and we don't know all the answers to that. It's just good stuff, though, to talk about. All right. Um, the car people left when Matt was be- boated. Oh, that, oh, that thing last night. Yeah. I left several comments in the YouTube thread. Yeah, good. Yeah, they acted really badly. They did. All right. Let's get to another question. Let's see. How about this? Can you please define sin nature and explain how humanity inherits sin because of Adam? Well, that's a good question. What is a sin nature? A, a, we have a human nature. So Adam had a human nature, had, uh, still is human. Now, but here's the thing. When Adam was made, before he fell, he was in a physical body, and he had a human nature that was not fallen. After he sinned, he was still human, but there was an effect upon that humanity in that now it was fallen. So what we have here are basically the difference between what's called essential and accidental properties. An essential property is necessary to the thing, but the accidental properties are not necessary. A sin nature is an accidental property, not an essential property. Let me explain. An essential property of a circle is its roundness, but all circles have roundness without exception. So. A, an accidental property would be the diameter of a circle because though all circles have a diameter the diameter can change you can have a, a diameter circle one meter uh, in diameter or half a meter or a mile or an inch it doesn't matter and so the the distance or the length of the, the diameter is uh, an accidental property it's still part of the circle but it can vary and one circle can have a diameter of 10 inches. Another circle will not have that diameter, but it's still a, a circle. It could have five inches. So that's a difference. That's what accidental and essential is. So the essential properties of the human nature is whatever that stuff is that's human. human. But the accidental property would be our fallenness. Now, and we know this because Adam was human before and after the fall. So how do we inherit Adam's sin? It's because he represented us in federal headship. He was the one who was our ancient father. He sinned, and then his fallen nature produces other fallen natures biologically and spiritually. And that's how that works. And there's a music. We'll be right back after these messages. Why don't you give me a call? 877-207-2276. Be right back. Matt Slick Live, taking your calls at 877-207-2276. Here's Matt Slick. All right, everybody, welcome back to the show on this slow Friday. Nobody's calling in. Why don't you be the first? 877-207-2276. All right, just a heads up, I'll be on the radio all next week, and after that, I'm off for three weeks. Uh, We'll be doing reruns for three weeks from October, roughly 7th, to the 27th, 28th, whatever, uh, I'm going going to Europe. I'm going to be doing a Bible Lands tour, so I'll not be on the air for that period of time. 
and uh, be checking out different countries doing the footsteps of uh, Paul. And so looking forward to that. And uh, we're going to have a great good time. Been prepping, getting stuff ready, and all of that. So if you have questions and comments before then, well, call now, call next week, whatever it is, and we can... Um, we can blab. So the number again is 877-207-2276. Now, uh, we can get back to the issue of, where's the emails here? Some of the emails. Now, that was Jennifer who was asking that question. She asked a previous one, I think the day before, uh, an email. It was a good question, too, and it, it is a good question. So um, would any human have chosen to disobey God in the Garden of Eden if it wasn't Adam or Eve? I believe the answer is yes. The reason I believe this, this is my opinion. If you disagree, that's uh, that's okay. Okay, so I believe that only God has the quality, the necessary, essential property of holiness. We do not. And holiness belongs to God's nature alone. It's essential to his essence. And so he cannot sin. He cannot do what is wrong. But that is part of his divine nature. When he makes us, we don't possess holiness or divinity because holiness is part of his divine nature. Therefore, because of that lack in us, and it can't be part of us, then when he makes us in his image, then we will sin. Not because he makes it the case, but because in our freedom, this is my opinion, that it's just a matter of time before we blow it. Because we don't have all wisdom, all knowledge, and know what is right and wrong the way God does. We also don't possess the holy nature that God does. So it's almost a necessity that will fall. Not that God is making us do that, but I just think there's something related to the issue of we don't have divinity. And we can't because it would mean that God is making little gods and it doesn't happen. So I'm thinking that's why anybody would have sinned. Uh, they, I just think they would have. And part of the the answer, uh, I keep I'm going to find this verse again. It is here in First Timothy five twenty one. I solemnly charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus and of His chosen angels to maintain these principles without bias, doing nothing in a spirit of partiality. So chosen angels, I think what that means, this is my opinion again, I think what that means is that um, is that they were the angels chosen by God not to fall when Satan fell, and that God did something to them, worked in them, I don't know what it is, but uh, enabled them, or I don't know, I can't even say, so that they wouldn't sin. And that's what I, I think is going on there. And uh, so that's why I say, yes, I believe that they would have sinned. Uh, everybody would have eventually. And so uh, she says, I'm a Christian, but I struggle feeling it's unfair that all humans automatically have sin nature because of Adam and Eve, who disobeyed God first and brought sin in. feel bad if I think this because I am. Okay. So just think about this, that the, the way Jesus died for our sins, it wasn't fair for him to be beaten wasn't fair for him to go to the cross and there representing us he uh, purchased our redemptive uh, redemption and it wasn't fair but it's what was good it's what was logistically right in order for us well the same thing with adam uh sin entered the world through one man adam romans five twelve. so he was our federal head our representative just as the last Adam, 1 Corinthians 15, 45, that's Jesus, uh, was the one who represented us. So because uh, Adam's representative, representative ability was because of Christ's representative ability. That's what I believe. All right? Okay. Hey, now let's see the next question here. If you want to give me a call, 877-207-2276. All right. So, okay, got a, a notice. Uh, Cynthia's calling the show, but no one is answering. Okay, maybe the uh, I'm talking and the producers, uh, the producers didn't know that. Maybe they don't know if something's up. If there's a um, a problem, I don't know. So what we can do is uh, if she wants to type in in the chat room. I think she's in the chat room over there. Let's see. Yeah, type in her question in the chat and get to it. We can do it that way too. All right. So maybe there's an issue with the phones and that's why. So did you? Okay. Let's see. Did 
Did you hear? I will take this out. Uh, that callers aren't being answered. Okay, let's see. Okay. So now let's get to another email in the meantime. How about this? Um, Matt, love your show. What is your stance on vaccinations? I think some vaccinations are very good. I think some vaccinations are not very good. Uh, specifically, the HPV hepatitis B. I have no idea. A certain job employer wants their employees to have this, and I'm on the fence about this one. All right, so here's the thing. When I was uh, working at a hospital and coming in contact with sick people, uh they required, in order to work at the hospital, they required certain shots and uh, inoculations, and I agreed to it. I have no problem with that. And one of the reasons was because I didn't want to get infected, but also did not want to infect others who are sick. One of my jobs, I had two interesting jobs at the hospital in, in San Diego that I did for a few years. I, I enjoyed it. And... Um, one was uh, registering patients in the emergency room. And so a lot of people would come in, we'd do it in Spanish, and uh, you'd meet people who are sick, people who, you know, I got some stories, interesting stuff. Uh, and so we don't want, don't want to get them sick. Maybe they come in, they're just, their immune system is run down, so vaccination for me is a good idea to, to not get them sick. And uh, if they have some germs, because a lot of them, I'll just say it this way, they were Ill illegals. We didn't turn them in or anything. They came for help. We just helped them. And a lot of them were illegals, you could tell. And who knows what country they came from and what diseases they might have. So this was a legitimate concern. I was also a, a transporter. So I'd take people in and out of operating rooms to the morgue, uh, rooms uh, for, for uh, procedures to be done, transporting them. And so a lot of times these people would be in, in uh, you know, weakened conditions. So it was smart for me to be inoculated take those vaccinations so that um, uh, there wouldn't be any problems with them. So, yeah, I don't have any problem with that kind of stuff. Uh, now, if it's just, you know, you're going to work uh, delivering mail, I don't think it's necessary, but whatever. This employer is a security guard company contacting working for an urgent care branch of a large hospital. See, I would think that would be okay because you're going to come in contact with people at hospitals and urgent cares and things like that and help info would be greatly appreciated so that was that's just my opinion uh, i'm not a doctor i'm not pretending to be one or anything like that i'm just a theologian and if i had that job and they wanted me to take that i'd go yeah okay you know i, I wouldn't have a problem with it all right so we had a caller coming in and uh the, the two, okay so there's, there is a problem with the phones there is a problem with the phones we'll work through it we'll work through it Hey, folks, we'll be right back after these messages. Please stay tuned. We'll be right back. It's Matt Slick Live, taking your calls at 877-207-2276. Here's Matt Slick. Everybody, welcome back to the show. If you want to give me a call, the phones are now working, 877-207-2276. I called and tested on the during the break, and they said, Matt Slick live. And I said, hey, this is Matt Slick. <laughs> it sounded funny. And uh, so anyway, they, they were, I don't know what happened, but now they're working. All right, so let's uh, get on the phones with Jan from North Carolina. Jan, welcome. You're on the air. Thank you very much for taking my call, Mr. Slick. Sure. I have a question concerning, um, are you familiar with and what is your opinion on the infancy Gospels of Thomas? It's a, a pseudo-epigraphal document. It's an apocryphal document. It's not legit. It's not real. It's just okay. something written later on. Attributed to Thomas. Has it been in existence a long time? I'm sorry, what? Has, it been, has that document been in existence a long time, or is that a relatively new thing? Um... Actually, I don't know. I don't know when it was first written uh, and first developed. Uh -huh. uh, so, but uh, these things are, they generally came in with the first few centuries, within one, two, three hundred okay. years of Jesus, because he was, Christianity was so popular, it hurt so much that a lot of people were writing things about him and saying, hey, we know about this. And they were trying to start their own religious movements and they wanted Jesus on their team. So that's what the Gospel of um. Thomas is and the Infancy Gospel of Thomas and things like that. So uh, it's probably okay. written. Usually within one to two hundred years of Christ, things like that. 
usually that's how they are but no basis okay. of truth you don't think no well you see with the basis of truth there there i can't say there's no truth in it but it's not uh scripture it's not uh, considered to be authentic it could be that someone who wrote 150 years later knows something in the bible and wrote about it and so there's a truth in it so that's what i'm saying is is it's not considered a scripture it's not inspired don't take it seriously and i hope you're not okay mm-hmm. do you have a, a reason for this um I don't know what's going on no i was just curious about i, I had I spoke down with my pastor and i was like what are there any stories of jesus you know as a child and I was just curious. I said, you know, just thinking with him having powers, he might not be fully aware of how to utilize that. He might have done things that made his parents embarrassed or confused and things like that. And um, then so I was looking things like the childhood of, Je- of Jesus, of course, on YouTube, the infancy gospels popped right up. So, yeah. Yeah, I would not. Um, I wouldn't worry about it. And, and the it Bible says, that tw- it, you know, it spoke of the 12 clay birds. Killing yeah. his friend and and being yeah. accused and saying come back to life and say I didn't do that. His father right. sending him to school, that kind of thing, you know. And he killed his teacher. You know, it was a, it was a really that's why I'm asking you because it was a very odd thing. So yeah. Yes. Now here's some scripture that'll help you out with this. So this is the the okay. account in Luke chapter two when the family of Jesus went into uh, Jerusalem to go to the temple. And as would often happen, the families would be in a camel train, a walking train of people, uh, mules or whatever it would be. And this would be often quite long. And so uh, the families were extended so your own child could be up 200 feet ahead staying with friends or a cousin. And they'd be with them all day or two days. And that wasn't uncommon because yeah. they were so tight knit. So they kind of lost right. contact with Jesus, and uh, and stuff like that. They, you know, where are you and stuff like that. But at any rate, uh, he says, "Why are you looking for me?" This is uh, Acts. I mean, uh, Luke two forty nine. Did you not know I'd be uh, in my father's house when I finally got to Jerusalem? And he did not understand the statement which he had made. Verse fifty one. And when and he went down with them and came to Nazareth and he continued in subjection to them and his mother treasured all these things in her heart so he remained in Nazareth in subjection to his mother and his father he didn't go anywhere else wasn't all this stuff okay mm-hmm. yeah Did that help so yeah that that's a that's an honest I mean that's something that can be verified you can put your finger right. on that you know so it's nothing right. but to just and I was that's why I was searching for for information I thought it might be Gnostic and I wasn't sure so yeah. Yeah, it's it's just it's a, a little sooner gnostic, pigful, a gnostic or ring say, to it right it's just whacked he's vengeful he's mean uh, you know Jesus is portrayed yeah. that way uh, in that yeah uh, that, that ap- apocryphal document yeah it, has so to, it was a very dark it was dark yeah it was a right. dark dark view of Jesus you know he teacher smacks him and instead of turning the other cheek he kills him is not what I would expect so yeah, yeah. It's something a Muslim would write, you know. Muslims would write something well, like that. Well, I wonder yeah. who origin, what religion or you know, is that does that or originate from? Who is that? You know, that that yeah. believes that and puts that in their doctrine. Anyone? No, not I'm aware of. Uh, is but there are yeah. some groups that will use the Gnostic Gospels and they'll say they're true and they're, they're you know they just don't have all their paws in the litter box. You know, they don't know what's going on. Yeah. So it's more of a shocking, shocking all kind of thing. A lot of it too. So right. Well, thank you for your information. That is what I wanted to know, and um, I will not con- be concerned with those 12 mud birds anymore, so yeah. Good, because it didn't happen. All right? Exactly. Exactly. That's right. It didn't happen. It exactly. Didn't happen. Thank you. All right. Thank you for good your time. Guys. I do appreciate it. I call you often, and I always love your answers, so thank you very much. Well, good. I'm glad. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> All right. Well, God bless you. Talk to you again soon. Thank you, All sir, right. and bye-bye. Okay. All right, we have nobody waiting right now. If you want to give me a call, all you have to do is dial 877-207-2276. And uh, tell you what I'll do now is I'm going to get back to the uh, emails, get some more emails here. Uh, here's one. What is up with all the Christians refusing to vote because both are wicked? 
maybe what's up with it? Why, why should Christian vote? Uh, I'm voting for Trump. People are telling me to repent because of communism. <laughs> oh man! I, um, so uh, I'm not sure I understand all the the sentence structure, but uh, Christians need to vote. And the I man, it's a tough one out there. I would say do a hierarchical structure of who's the very worst at the bottom and then work your way up and whoever's left that's about all you got okay so um uh, yeah yeah Yeah, there's there's more i could talk about but i won't all right let's try another one here i'm looking for a bible study that could be used for a college campus bible study to reach the lost do you have any recommendations you know i i know there's stuff out there like that i do um but i don't know off the top of my head however if there was a ministry on a campus that needed something geared towards the college thing I would be willing to write it and one of the things I would ask is that the people who are going to administer it uh, give me feedback afterwards and or give me the kinds of questions that and the issues are there and I can uh, cater a Bible study around that. Even though I do know the basics of what what would happen in a college. I went to a secular college for two years, and Christianity was just openly attacked. It was openly attacked. Um, I remember in a philosophy class, get this, so I needed. To, I was going to go to college in order to go to seminary, so I, I, you know, I was going to do my degree, and uh, and so I went to this one college and I had to petition to get into the philosophy class. You got to take philosophy, part of the, whatever you got to do. And so I'm there in the very front row, and I got my petition uh, paper so that I can uh, get in the class. And the professor will sign it, and you get, you know, because it's already filled up, he'll take a few extra. So he's there, and this pompous, pompous, arrogant guy. He says, we're going to study this, we're going to study that, we're going to learn how to think, we're going to learn how to think properly, and uh, we're going to believe in truth, not like they do in the Bible. And I, I'm like, what? What was that? Just a flat-out, unneeded, unnecessary attack. And and I'm sitting there staring at the guy, and, and uh, he, he, you know, I said, what, why, why, what? And he said, the Bible asks you to do things that are impossible. It's ridiculous. And I said, like what? And he said, uh, be perfect. Your Father in heaven is perfect. And I said, well, that's Matthew 5, 48. And the context, it starts in verse 43, where God says, love everyone equally. He lets the sun shine on the good and the rain shine on the good and the bad. And, I mean, the sun on the good and the bad. And so he's saying, be perfect because your Father is. It's in the context of loving everybody equally. That, that's all that, that is. And that's when I realized I made a big mistake <laughs> because he didn't like being corrected in front of an entire class. And uh, I just realized, oh, he's not going to let me in. And so, sure enough, when it was time to get petitions uh, signed, I I was the first one up. He said, we don't have any room. And I I said, okay, thank you. And I walked back. I turned around. He's signing petitions for others. This is the bigotry and arrogance that is prevalent in a lot of colleges. A lot of colleges. No joke. Bigotry, hatred, ignorance, foolishness. And... uh, I might as well just tell you another story. So I'm in uh, the the same college, right? I ended up getting a philosophy class. I'll tell you what happened there, too. But uh, so I'm in a class. um, I've got a break coming up. This is good. This Oh, you're going to love this. In a cultural anthropology class, what actually happened in the class. Oh, man. This is how to win friends and influence people by Matt Slick. So take, take notes, folks. Right after the break, we'll be right back. Well, give me a call, 877-207-2276. Be right back. It's Matt Slick Live, taking your calls at 877-207-2276. Here's Matt Slick. All right, everyone, welcome back to the show. If you want to give me a call, 877-207-2276. All right, there we go, got that, got that. All right, so this is what happened in this class. I was just telling the story here, is that um, I was in this class, cultural anthropology, and the woman teacher was particularly hostile 
to Christianity. She wasn't directly, but indirectly. You could tell by the things she's saying in her attitudes and dismissive kind of comments and things like this. She would say various things. And I could tell, you know. And uh, she was talking about how great evolution was. Evolution this, evolution that. So I, I decided to do some research on a particular hominid ancestor. A hominid ancestor like Australopithecus, uh, Eanthropostasoni, Neanderthals, things like that. And so I, did, I picked one. I forgot which one it was, but I picked one. It was a common one. And I, uh, I studied it, and I discovered uh, from the experts, the, these are the secularists. These are the guys with more degrees than the thermometer, like the, the curator of the British Museum, you know, things like this. You know, all these well-degreed, well-qualified people who said this particular hominid ancestor was not uh, in the human line that it was something else, and it wasn't an ancestor. I just happened to find this information. I had it all documented and had it with me. If perchance, maybe, she might particularly pick on that, that uh, hominid ancestor as a proof of evolution. About two weeks later, you won't believe it, she did exactly that one. My eyes bugged out, like, are you kidding me? This is like a dream come true for me. And so I had the documentation right there, my notebook, which I carried a notebook to all my classes, all my notes and stuff. And she was, you know, pontificating, oh, blah, 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 ancestor, blah, 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 evolution's true, blah, 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 this is blah, blah, blah. Okay. So I raised my hand, and she called on me, and I said, so, you know, I, I did some research. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh. So I did some research, I said, and you mentioned this hominid ancestor, and I said, well, here, I have some quotes. And this quote is from so and so, and this quote is from that. You know, all these qualifications. And I said, "There's not. It's not a human ancestor. It's not. It's this." They said, "It's not. It's not. It's not." I mean, I, I made her look bad. It wasn't intentional, but it was pretty obvious. She got caught. Okay. And I said, "So what do you do with that?" And she, <laughs> oh man, that face. You know, she was so upset with me. She's trying to retain her composure, and she said in a semi monotone, breathy voice, They're wrong. <laughs> man. Man, I'm like, Oh, man, that's too good to be true. And so she started talking about how evolution is true, and this hominid ancestor, and I, I raised my hand. Okay. <laughs> oh, man. I raised my hand. I, I didn't get a chance to ask my question. <laughs> but because. Because for the entire class, for the rest of the class, you know, 20 minutes, a half hour, she wouldn't call on me, and I kept my hand in the air <laughs> just for this whole time. I just, I kept switching my arm because I was getting tired, you know. I just, you know, I'm just polite. I didn't cause any trouble to have my hand up, and the students are looking at me, you know, begging her, like, what are you going to do with this guy? And uh, I was going to, I was going to ask the question, you know, I was, was going to say, well, excuse me, but. So you're a cultural anthropologist and not a biological evolutionist with the degrees in it. They said that it's not. Why would you say that they're wrong? Why are you correct and they're not? That's what, that's what I was going to ask. It's a very pointed question and worth a discussion, right? She wouldn't call on me for the whole rest of the class. And, oh, man, she was stumbling at her words. She was so upset with me. And... Uh, you know, I, that's what you got to do in class. You got to do stuff like this to the teachers. You got to you got to knock them down off their pegs, and so uh, so the, cla the you know it's time to go, and everybody's packing up and they're going, and I'm packing up really really slowly, okay, real slowly, and so uh, I made sure the last one out of the class, and then I walked by her. I said, you know, I really enjoyed the class. I can hardly wait to come back. You know, on whatever day it was, for the rest of the class, and her eyes, and she, her her jaw tensed up, and her eyes eyelids stiffened. You know, and um, I think the next day I saw her in the hallway, and I walked by her. <laughs> she would not look at me. She was obvious. It was obvious she wanted nothing to do with me. Okay, so it doesn't take much to to uh, destroy teachers. <laughs> Boy, listen to me talking. You know, it's not like I want to destroy them, but it's like, come on. You know, just don't, of course, you know, how's it going to affect your grade? So, because uh, they're so bigoted, they're not fair. 
if I was in a class teaching something at a college level and someone contradicted me, I'd say, really? Okay, well, let, let's talk about that. I said, maybe I, I got it wrong. I would tell the class, maybe I got it wrong. But, you know, this is okay. Let's look and blah, blah, blah. Let's just say that it came to the point where the guy or girl proved the point. I'd say, you know, that is awesome. I, I'm going to give you a little bit of an extra nod towards an excellent grade because that was good and I want the class to know no teacher has all the answers, but we can learn together. That's my attitude. That that's, that would be my attitude, okay? I would have no problem with that. I would encourage that kind of discussion. I might even throw something out on purpose. That's stupid to see if anybody <laughs> buys into it. And if they do, do buy into it, go, wait a minute, did you hear what I just said? Come on. So anyway, so I get into another philosophy class, right? And, um, and so I get in there, and I keep my mouth shut for the first week. I want to make sure I'm not going to get kicked out because I need to... The, I needed for my degree, whatever it was, you know, to graduate and all this stuff and transferred units to stuff. Anyway, so, uh, uh, but, you know, I'm going to speak up. Once I'm secure in the class, here it comes. So the professor, and he was a better professor than the other guy, the other uh, philosophy professor. This guy was, he was fair, and he was intelligent, and he wasn't uppity like some are who think, I'm a college professor, I know everything. You must bow. No, 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 that kind of stupidity. So, um, he would say stuff, and, and you know, I'd raise my hand, and I'd just say, well, what about blah, blah, blah? And uh, so we had these discussions in the classroom. He would occasionally attack the Bible or attack Christianity, attack something. But it wasn't a, a vicious attack. It was a reasoned kind of proposition, and they said, that's why that is a problem over there in the Bible. And I'd raise my hand. So, well, what about this as a response? And I would do this. And... Um, so it evolved, it, for real, it evolved into the class where uh, what would happen is that he would say something and if it had anything to do with Christianity, he would, after he was done, he'd just look at me and go, okay, Matt, give us the response. And I would. It evolved into that. What was interesting was, uh, he was I got a great a grade and, and he was a good teacher, you know, and, and uh, he wasn't a, a bigoted twit. He... Uh, he didn't agree with me, but, you know, he didn't penalize me for disagreeing with him and having discussions. He, that was good. I like that kind of thing. So anyway, this is what happened. I was in a, I was out in the parking lot getting into the car, my car, uh, and um, one of the students, fellow students in that philosophy class came up to me and uh, you know, parked nearby and says, hey, Matt, Matt, hold on, hold on. And I said, yeah. And uh, she said, look, I'm a Christian. I said, oh, okay. I didn't know anybody else in the class was a Christian. I said, okay, you're a Christian, good. And she said, I go to such and such a church. She said, she said, this has been hurting my faith, what he's been saying. And different classes has been hurting my faith. And he said, you're keeping it for me. You're helping me understand. And, and it's strong, stronger because of the comments you make in class. You have there are answers. And I said, well, praise God. Praise God. You see, that is, that's just evidence of how hostile the, uh, the academic realm is. I would, I mean, if I was, God granted me more time, you know, I mean, I'm almost 68 here. If he said, okay, in a vision, okay, you've got another 50 years, I'd say, okay, good. Hey, honey, I'm going to go back to college, or I'm going to go get another degree, or I'd, I'd go take bio, uh, biological evolutionary uh, stuff. That's what I would take. I'd want to study biological evolution theory. Oh, I think it'd be great. Get into chemistry and and uh, cladistics and epigenetics and oh I love that stuff I even like saying the words that's good with a minor in quantum physics that would be my idea of a good time seriously if, I, if they have minors in quantum physics depends if it's a, a Planck minor which would be really small that's a joke for those who might know and so um, to go back and, and challenge uh, the professors uh, and stuff and I remember back here at Boise State University uh, about 10, 15 years ago, I was asked to go into a, cl a philosophy class and give a presentation on why God exists. And I still remember this. The, the students had no interest in this topic. None. They had none. I could tell. They're, they're just there doing their time. They would rather be on their phones. You know, they do some stupid philosophy stuff. I wish I could teach a, 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 Not that I'm that good at philosophy, but I wish I could teach on it. Because I, I, know, I know enough to... Uh, really present stuff but at any rate so I'm presenting this information uh, basic information uh, on logic and philosophy and stuff like this and I was dumbfounded that the students didn't even know the basics 
and they were in a philosophy class. Now, I'm not knocking the teacher because I didn't know what the dynamic was, but the impression I got was they just didn't care. They were not interested in any evidences or any proofs or any logic or anything. They didn't care. And it was interesting. You know, that was interesting because when I believe it or not, I'm just rambling because no one's calling here. I did um, a stint at a Christian uh, high school where I was uh, a, a substitute teacher for a while. And then I did so much that they asked me to teach a couple classes. And so this is a Christian high school. And there was a lot of unbelievers who would go there too because they, mom and dad wanted their kids to be better behaved. So they sent the bad ones to the Christian school to hope the teachers would fix them. And I discovered that uh, a lot of times the Christians didn't, didn't, uh, they didn't know anything either. Uh, it was pretty, you know, this is high school, of course, but you know, you got to dumb down your knowledge level at their level. And they're not stupid. I mean, just saying, you, gotta, you know, what level are they at? And in that level, you'd expect them to have certain areas of knowledge. And they didn't even have that in a lot of areas. And so I would go from class to class to class. And I would teach Spanish or I would teach drafting. I would teach, uh, do history. I'd do biblical theology. <laughs> These class, these students, some will be in the same class. Go, how can you be in all of these classes teaching these things? When I said it's easy, you study, you study. You guys don't study, and uh, I'd say Let, let's talk about stuff. That reminds me, one of my greatest teachers in college was Rod Rosenblatt. He recently passed away. He was a Lutheran professor. I went to a secular college for two years and then a, secular, a, a Lutheran college for two years. And um, Rod Rosenblatt, he was Dr. Rod Rosenblatt, he's a great guy. Um, and I, I'd take him to the airport, I'd run uh, favors for him, you know, uh, you know get, do this, do that, transport him here, his daughters and stuff like that, kids to the schools and stuff. And he'd pay me a little bit of money because we didn't get much, and it was a nice way to make a little bit of food money. But um, what was really great was that there was a few of us who would follow him around for classes. We would just take a class. If he taught that class, we wouldn't go, took it. If he taught that class over there, we just took the class because he was teaching it. And the reason we would do that is because even though we may not have had that particular interest in that class, it might not be the most interesting thing for our, our subject matter and our major, but it was within the, within the realm of an elective. We would take his classes because he was such a good teacher. And what he would do is he would teach you the course material but he would get it out quickly and say, this is what you need to know. Here's the things. Look at this. Put this together. Then he'd say, now let's talk. And that's where we would discuss. And he would let us uh, throw out ideas in philosophy, in logic, in theology. And if we disagreed with him, that was okay. And it was so freeing to have a great teacher like that. I loved it and learned a lot from him. Hey, there you go. I've just rambled for most of the show. Hope you enjoyed it. May the Lord bless you by His grace. We'll be back on the air on Monday. And I hope you have a great weekend, everybody. God bless. We'll see you. Another program powered by the Truth Network.